Praise the Lord, Life Point. Why don't we go ahead and stand and let's just give God a hand clap of praise. Oh, it doesn't matter where you are right now. Oh, God is pushing back the darkness. He is fighting for us. Oh, he is our champion. So why don't we give him some praise? For he is fighting our battles. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, hallelujah. 
this region just begin to worship and praise God. Let that peace fill your home. Let that peace fill your heart. Let that joy fill your heart today. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through. But if you let that king of joy, the king of peace, the king of love, let him come and envelop you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The king of glory is in your house right now. He's in your house. He inhabits the praise and the worship of his people. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much for our worship team. It's good to have portion of them back here today. We miss them so much. Amen. We're so glad to be able to <clears throat> pull back at least a partial of our team and hopefully we can add others or alternate. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, somebody say hopefully out there. Hopefully, in faith, we'll be back in church very soon. I'm praying so hard for this coming week. The governor had mentioned it uh, about a week ago that he was hoping that's where we would be. And I am praying for that. Amen. Pray with us. I want to see all of you in church. Amen. We'll go over some of the possible details, if that makes any sense at all, at the end of service. And, of course, we'll be putting out some information as we receive it. But I am very excited this morning to bring to this pulpit a young man of God, a man that I know prays and fasts, a man that I know seeks after the will of God for his life. <clears throat> Amen. And that would be my son. I'm proud to call him son. Amen. And he's going to come and bring the word of God to us today. Amen. Worship God with him as he preaches. Let, let the anointing fall in your home. Let's just praise God where we are right now as Pastor Rick Gillis comes to the pulpit. Let's just take a minute and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords right now. I can feel him in this place. I know that you can feel him in your homes right now, wherever you may be gathered, wherever you may be watching this by yourself. You have the opportunity to touch the throne room of Jesus right now. Let's just take a little bit longer and enjoy the sweet presence of the Lord. Jesus, you are holy, God. Jesus, you are worthy, and there was no one else like you. God, we come before you today in humble honor, Jesus, in all of what you are doing and what you have done for us. Thank you, Jesus. It is good to sort of be here with you all today. A little bit more of the, the team back, so I'm not preaching to an empty sanctuary. Uh, it's a little bit weird looking at a camera, uh, but hopefully you all will... Uh, feel like you're here today or I'll feel like I'm there in your living room whatever whatever works best for you I guess we'll, uh, we'll get right ahead into the word this morning we're going to be turning to Luke chapter 4 reading verses 18 and 19 this is actually Jesus uh, quoting and fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah and it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer this morning, and I ask that you would pray with me that God would touch each one of our hearts and our minds, and that also he would anoint me to speak his word as he would like to have done today. Jesus, we thank you again for your awesome presence that we feel right now. Jesus, we know that we're still not all together in one place, Jesus, but we are bound together in spirit. And right now we are here to worship you. We've worshiped you, and now we are here to hear your word. God, I ask that you would touch our hearts and our minds, that we may receive your word today. We may allow it to change us. God, that we would be encouraged and strengthened today. God, I ask that you would anoint my mouth and I may speak your words clearly. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. My title for today is very simple, I believe kind of complex at some points, but it's simply where you belong. We've all grown up or are growing up in this world that we live in. And the world that we live in tries to teach us or force us maybe to belong to something. You know, we need to belong to something. When you're a kid, 
you've got to have that particular toy, right? To be with the cool kids, you've got to have the right toy. You know, as you get a little bit older, maybe you have to be on the football team or the soccer team or the, the cheer squad or, you know, you, you've got to be just, just the right thing in the school to be, to be cool and to belong to the group. You have to be super smart, maybe, or you have to be really good at an instrument to be in the band or the sing, or you, you got to be really good at something. You have to have something that puts you in a group with everybody else so you can belong. As we grow older, you have to wear this brand to belong. You have to drink this. You have to look like that. You have to drive this car. You have to have the latest technology. You have to have this hat. If you aren't living here, you haven't made it yet. You don't belong. You have to work as much as possible. You have to take as much time off as possible. You have to build your wealth to leave something for your family. You have to build your wealth so you can enjoy your retirement. We're taught in this world that to belong, we've got to have it all right, or at least act like it's all right, or at least dress like it's all right. You know, and it never ceases to amaze me any time that I see a commercial or hear a commercial, and it's, it just kind of blows your mind. And, you know, I've done a little bit of studying into this myself. Um, it's some marketing things, and, and you look, and the ideas behind it are just kind of mind-blowing. But millions and millions of dollars can be spent on a simple 30-second commercial or a one-minute commercial. And what are they trying to promote? Yes, they're, they're trying to promote their product to you, but how are they trying to promote it? They're trying to promote it via lifestyle. You can be this. You can belong to this group if you drink this cola brand, right? Because surely that's what makes it all happen. You can have joy in your life if you just drink this soda. I don't know about you, but... I mean, I can say, I guess, honestly, right now, I would really enjoy a cold soda. Uh, it's really warm in here. Um, but I've never just gotten joy from a soda. Like, to be perfectly honest, the first response is usually, ah, that burns, <laughs> right? And then we're like, okay, now, now it feels good. Now it feels refreshing, I guess. I don't know. I used to be anti-water. Now, lately, I've started drinking water more, and I've found, wow, actually, it is really refreshing. Um, but it, it's just the idea behind it. To belong to this group, you've got to drive this car. To belong to this group, and there are even car groups. I'm not saying it's wrong to, to belong to a car group that has the same type of cars. I would enjoy that. Um, however, <laughs> with my current car, I don't really know that there's a special group out there for that. Um, there may be, if there is, I probably wouldn't want to be a part of it. Um, but we have these things all in our life that this is how you belong to something. This is how you fit in. To belong really means to fit, to be in the right place. And as much as possible, the world tries to tell us and sell us into fitting in the right place. That's what it's about, fitting into the, wrong, the right place. You know, there are a number of things that can cause us to not belong to something. In the course of all we're taught by living in this world, we're taught that there are a lot of things that can cause us not to belong. Throughout history, there have been many people that have taught, been taught that they can't belong because of where they were born. They can't belong because of their family's background. They can't belong because of what their culture is or what their race is or what their color is. People have been taught that if they mess up, they have no place in society. If your family messed up, you have no place in society. We've been taught that if you're poor, you're nothing. We've been taught that if you're too rich, you're unfair and selfish. And the scale between belonging and not belonging is ever-changing. It, it seems like it always changes. It depends which way, what the perspective is, right? Someone in a situation other than you they're going to look at you and say, well, you don't belong. Why? It's all, all around us. It seems like no matter where you fit into the scale, you still don't really belong. You don't really belong somewhere. In this effort to belong to something, there are many other things that can keep us from belonging. 
And we find these things maybe in the world, and we tend to carry these into meeting God. And we have these things that we carry in to, you know, the first time we're in church, or the first time we've heard the gospel preached, or whatever the case may be, and we say, well, I can't fit in because I've been taught this. You know, you may, you may say, well, Pastor Rick, you know, nobody ever taught me that I should feel insecure. No one ever sat down and taught me that you should feel worthless. But the world that we live in very often teaches us that. By the things it presents to us, by the people in our lives sometimes, even those that don't mean it that way, they can teach us to feel these things. And so we carry these into meeting God. Some of these things we may have experienced as a result of other people who have even met God. You know, maybe you've come into a church before. Maybe you've been hurt by somebody in the church before. And maybe you've left the church with a bad taste in your mouth to just say that's a bunch of hypocrites. They act like they have it all together, but here they are. They still hurt me. And we try to apply that to God. We ourselves can cause us to not belong. Maybe the way that we were treated made us feel this way. Maybe we feel like we've been excluded. Maybe we weren't directly invited. The people didn't pay enough attention to me. I didn't feel welcomed. The pastor preached that something I do is sin and it's wrong. Surely that means no one wants to be around me. Everyone around me seems like they've had it figured out, but still someone hurt me or offended me. The church is full of hypocrites. I'm too far gone. The roof will fall in if I come. I'm better than that. I don't need the crutch of religion. The scale is ever widening, isn't it? You can range from, as crazy as it sounds, and I've heard it before, I can't come to church because the roof is going to fall in because I'm that terrible of a person, to I don't need religion. It's just a crutch. I don't need that. No matter where you are in that spectrum, we've found a reason why we can't belong to God. Well, God, I, I, I can't belong to you because, because of this. Someone has hurt me. I have this in my past. And no one else loves me. Why would you? Especially if what the pastor is saying is true and you can see everything and you know everything I've ever done. There are people that don't love me that have done, don't even know half of what I've done. How can you possibly love me? How can I possibly belong to you? And maybe you fit in that area. You know, maybe that's where you've found yourself to belong. It's, it's kind of sad, honestly, that we can find ourselves belonging to something so sad. I belong to the outcasts. I belong to this. You know, we all have different personalities, and, and lately uh, we've made lots of jokes about how I belong to the introvert side of things, and my wife belongs to the extrovert side of things. And it's very different. And you know what? I'm comfortable with belonging to the introverts. That is fine. Introverts, quietly, here we are, right? <laughs> Extroverts, we don't, we don't need you to tell us who you are. We know who you are. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy with belonging to that. But less, I, you know, I'm, I don't want to belong to depression. I don't want to belong to hate. I don't want to belong to, to bitterness. You know, maybe you have a good reason in your mind to belong to that. Well, my family belonged to it. Everyone I've ever known has belonged to it. So I belong right here in my angriness, in my depression. My, full, my whole family's been depressed. I'm not going to get out of it. My whole family is a mess. Why could, how could I ever get out of it? Maybe that's where you are today. I don't know. Only you know that, and only Jesus knows that. But wherever we fit, we're good at finding ways to be excluded. We can always find a way to be excluded. And to be perfectly honest with you, every one of us has a reason why we should be excluded from God. The Bible says that we are all sinners, Every single one of us. No one deserves his love. Not 
not any one of us. Doesn't matter how good it may seem that we have lived or how bad we may have seemed to have lived. None of us could ever deserve the love of God, to deserve to belong to God. But the Bible tells me that it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. The Bible tells me that Jesus, God himself, robed in flesh, died on the cross to make us belong with him. If you will picture with me a God that knows everything, has known everything from the beginning, knew before he created mankind that we were going to mess up and spit in his face, but then still knew that later on to fix the problem, he would put himself in the body of a mere human being and die so we could have a connection with him. How honestly crazy is that? How deep is a love to cause God to do that for us? I read about a God who loved us enough to give himself to the rich and to the poor, to the obvious sinner and the one that seemed like they had it all together. I know a God that doesn't differentiate between our class. The Bible says he's no respecter of persons. He doesn't care what color we are, what race we are, what background we come from. It doesn't matter to him. He loves us all the same. I know a God that gives us clear direction on how to make it to heaven and how to, and how to live a life that's right and then forgives us every time that we fail. You know, that would get frustrating to me. To give someone clear directions and they continuously mess it up. But God does it for us every single day. I've given you this plan, and yet time and time again, maybe, you know, we're trying to follow the plan, and we're doing our best to follow the plan, and we fall smack on our face. And he doesn't turn his back from us. Instead, he helps us up, and he says, that's okay. My blood covers it. Keep moving. Don't stay here. Keep moving. You belong with me. Wherever you are today, whatever you may be thinking right now, whether you think that you've found somewhere on this physical earth to belong to or not, I can tell you where you belong. You belong in the arms of our Heavenly Father. You belong in the presence of the King of Kings. You belong at the throne of Jesus Himself. You belong in the peace of the one who can calm the wind and the waves. You belong in the forgiveness of the one who forgave the very ones who physically nailed him to the cross. You belong in the hands of the one who holds the world. You belong in the love of the one who loved you first and died for you before you even ever existed. You belong in the eyes of a God that sees you as his very own child. You belong in the arms of a God that will run to you the moment that you turn back to him. You belong in the fold of a shepherd that would leave the 99 just to come find you. You belong in the love of a God that would die for you, knowing the mistakes that you would make. You belong in the hands of a God that would stoop down right in the sand, help you up, and tell you your accusers are no more knowing very well what you just did. You belong in the hands of a God that would make the very one who denied him become the first preacher of salvation. You belong in the love of a God that would pick you, knowing that you try to fill your life with everything but him. You belong with Jesus. Whether you found somewhere on this physical earth to belong or not, we honestly do not belong here. And we can feel the tension building, us, or building around us because this is not our home. This is not where we're meant to stay. There's something missing inside of us, and that is Jesus. There is something burning and calling us deeper to, deeper to something. Maybe we don't even know what it is. I can tell you for sure what it is right now. It is Jesus Christ himself. You do not belong to Satan. You do not belong to sin. 
You don't have to belong to hatred, to envy, to lust, to fear, to depression. Because you can belong to the one that wipes all of that away. The very one that created your heart knows how it works, still loves you, and is still willing to help you. That's where you belong. If you've started out this message wondering where you belong in this crazy world, it's here. It's, it's right here. If you don't have a church, maybe you've been watching us online and you haven't come yet, I can tell you, you belong in this church. You belong in a church that teaches the truth. You belong in a church that will love you no matter what. And yes, I can, I can tell you, we will all make mistakes. Maybe we seem to act like we're all together, but we're all human beings. I heard somebody say one time that going to church and being frustrated because there are broken people there and, and people that don't do things right is kind of like going to the gym and being angry because out of shape people are there. They're there to get better. We are here to get better. But I can tell you that Jesus is here. And you belong where he is. If you've been just mistreated, abused, hurt, discriminated, de- neglected, forsaken, whatever it may be, you belong in the arms of Jesus. The love of God is the only thing that can fix us. The love of God is the only thing that can fix this world. We don't belong in this world. We belong with God. This morning, I hope that this has pricked your heart. I don't know where you are. I I can't even see everyone that is watching this video right now. But Jesus knows exactly where you are. Jesus knows where you fit in this whole category, and it doesn't even matter. It really doesn't matter. We try to figure out where we fit. But Jesus just knows. You fit with me. You you fit with me. You are my child. You belong with me. Wherever you are right now, I hope that you will take a few minutes and find a place to pray. Maybe maybe you don't know how to pray. Maybe you're watching this, this video today and you have never prayed. You've never even heard of this God that loves you so much. Just start to talk to him today. Start to ask him into your life. Start to ask him how he can help you, how he can show his love for you. There is hope. There is a plan of salvation. We need to repent, to be sorry for our ways. We don't have to list it all out. We just have to come to him and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the mistakes I've made. I'm sorry for being too proud. I'm sorry for wherever it may be. And I'm going to strive to turn around from that. And he will take that. And if you will allow him this morning, he can fill you with the Holy Ghost right in your own living room, right in your in your bedroom, right in your basement, your car, the park, wherever you're sitting, wa- standing watching this right now. I know a God that is willing to put his spirit in you give you the strength that you need to wrap his loving arms around you like you have never felt before there is nothing on this earth that can compare to the love of Jesus Christ and if you need to be if you've never been baptized before that is when Jesus will wash away your sins it's something that we do to show us being buried that old man being buried and him washing away our sins in this tank call the pastor you can message us on facebook whatever it is we will get it set up for you to be baptized but the whole point of all of this is we belong with jesus jesus loves us more than anyone ever could let's just take a few minutes now and and enjoy the love of god
Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you, Lord, for the way you've moved in our hearts today through your word. Jesus, I pray over this congregation, over every person that hears this message, that you would draw us closer to you, that you would help us to understand how very much we belong with you. It's coming today soon, God, that we will stand with you on streets of gold. But until that day, we stand with you on this earth, in your family, and in your love. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. And I'm praying vehemently that we can see you in person this coming Sunday. I don't know that to be true. We are trying. We are hoping. We are praying. I really don't have a lot to give you that is a firm answer because I don't have any. But I just want you to start being prepared and start getting yourself in that mode of coming back to church, whether it's this week or maybe next week. We don't know. <clears throat> and until we get the directives from the government, we won't really know how to uh, break the service up if we have to at all. So I will say that most likely if we have to split the service, uh, we will probably run a service at 10 and 12 and have two services. If we are able to do one service, then it will be at 11 o'clock. The main service will be at 11 o'clock. There most likely will not be nursery or Sunday school. Uh, we'll continue to do those online. And thank you so much to the team that has worked so hard. And uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll let you in on a little bit of it when you come back and we'll show you some blooper videos so you can see just how much of a challenge all this has been. Some of the things that go on behind the scenes and the mistakes that are made. But we've got an amazing team that has worked so hard. The ministry team, worship team, everybody has pulled together. Thank you for your continued giving and support. Amen. Please keep that going. The church is moving forward. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.